Hey, welcome back. Just a quick update here on Kurt's bug. And, uh, you know, last time we kind of showed you what was going on with some of the wiring and some of the stuff that's been keeping us busy. And, uh, well, it's just been more of that. I was really hoping by now I'd have the wiring done. But as I got closer to kind of getting things wrapped up there, I found a whole bunch of other little things that needed to be done ahead of time. And really that kind of sidetracked me into some other things. And well, we've got a lot done. Wiring is not one of them, but at least I figured I'd give you a little heads up as far as what we've been doing here. So if we just take a peek under the hood here, so this probably looks pretty similar to what we saw last time. You know, we've got our wiring run down in this channel here. Uh, we've got the fuse block up here. Uh, nothing right now is hooked up. I just kind of have everything laid in place just to, just to give me an idea on where things are going to be. But here's some of the stuff we've been working on. Right now we've got the LED controllers taken out. I just needed those out of the way for uh, some of the work I was doing here. But I had mentioned in the last video that I was going to have a, a cover plate that was going to go on here uh, just to cover all this, protect my controllers and the like, and uh, well, I've got that all finished up here. If you look, you can see these tabs that are welded in. These are actually the attachment points, and these are placed so they don't run into my controllers. And then I've got this plate right here that actually is what's going to cover this up, and you'll see if I lay this in here. That's going to sit right about. It's going to sit right about there, and then I've got some flathead screws that are going to sit flush to the surface once this is actually bolted down, and then it actually is really, really rigid. So that's going to take care of covering that up. You'll notice this big old slot right here. That is actually for the fuel gauge because it's a mechanical fuel gauge. Uh, the cable runs out right here, and then this will pop up and sit up on top of the gas tank. So that's what that slot's for. And then I've got this little this little shield here. Uh, while it's not necessary, and I probably will shorten it up just a little bit, that is actually going to help act as a backstop for this, this front cover here. Once we get this slit up into place, you can see now how everything is completely hidden. So the wires are not visible here. You can't see any of the stuff here. The wires we see off to the side, those will be actually tucked away uh, once we get around to finishing all that. And then we'll have, again, uh, some side panels here that are going to cover all this up. So it's actually uh, really looking, looking pretty slick. Now one of the reasons we don't have all the electrical uh, finished up here, we don't have any of the ends terminated and all that, is really because as I was kind of figuring all that out, trying to see where everything went, I, I realized I really needed to have all of the air system completed. So uh, last week's video we put out was actually getting the tank mounted in the spare tire well. And uh, that was just a quick one just to show you what we were doing. But I needed to get that wrapped up. I needed to get all the airlines kind of figured out where they were going to run. And all that kind of kind of ties in together because I have to you know, make sure I've got mounting points for everything. So that is really what kind of sidelined all the electrical. I haven't actually done anything on the electrical uh, other than little things here and there, just so I could get all these lines uh, routed. But uh, wait until you see all the, uh, all the stuff I got figured out here. So first things first, I went ahead and got the uh, air compressor mounted, and that is now gonna be its permanent home. And we can ignore these lines, these still have to be tucked away. But I needed to get the compressor mounted so I could get the power wire run to where it's going to go. <coughs> You'll see I've got a, a tab welded in here, so I fold that over, it's going to hold this wire in place. And then I needed to get the, get the air lines routed here. And I've seen some systems where people will just take this exit line and they'll just fold it back. They'll put a T on it so they can run one to the tank and one up to the gauges, and they call it good. Uh, I wanted something just a little bit cleaner, uh, and I know things are just a, a dirty mess right now, but if you take a look here, get this power wire out of the way, this is my exit line from the compressor, so that actually tucks down behind the tie rod here. Now, the tie rod is at its worst possible position. If I rotate the wheel, 
you can see it actually moves away from the compressor. So if I put that right here, this is the worst case scenario right here. So there's plenty of space here. It's not going to run into it. I made a little bracket. I'll pull the pump off in a second and show you a little bracket I made to hold this line back. And then I've got that routed forward where it actually enters the uh, trunk cavity. And that's where we'll get it hooked up to the tank. This is the bracket I made here. There was already a couple of holes in the front of the pump, so I was able to bolt to that. And it's a pretty simple piece. It's just a eighth inch piece of half inch wide steel that's bent around the corner. It's got a bit of an angle bend on it here. And I've got a hole drilled in it so I can put in this little clip here and that's what's gonna hold this hose in place. And really most important was that it was long enough that it held this hose back so it wouldn't run into the tie rod. So that's, that's that bracket there. So right here what you'll see is actually a, a bulkhead connector uh, that takes a quarter inch pipe fitting. And this is actually where my air is going to enter. So I'm going to pull the backside off and show you what's going on there. But basically now I have this, this fitting right here and there's going to be a line that's going to run from this fitting to the tank and that's what's going to fill the tank. Now I'm not splitting it here to go to the air gauges. I'm actually going to do that on the back side. So this is what threads into the, into the car. And then I bought this, this Y splitter here. So I've got the air inlet from the pump is right here. And then off of that, I've got it split into my exit hose, which is actually going to run up to my valves. And that's what's going to control the, the suspension. But that's a nice, clean way of setting this up. I don't have to worry about any lines running through and chafing, and everything's going to be nice and nice and solid. So that's where the, the air line from the compressor goes, and it goes right to this bulkhead connector. Now something else that goes with this air compressor uh, that I really just didn't like the way it was set up. Uh, this right here is actually the air filter. So it's going to draw in some nice clean air. There's a, an element inside that's going to filter the air so we don't damage the compressor. The issue is not with the filter, but it was the location of the filter. If you look at where the pump is, the filter actually screws onto the back side of the pump. And when you put the pump in place, the filter just sits up against the firewall, and that's it. That's, its, that's where it lives. Now the issue I have with that is that this thing is always exposed to the outside elements. There's uh, nothing blocking water and dirt from getting up in there and you know just daily driving it's going to suck in a lot, of, a lot of crud. So really what I wanted to do is well move the air filter to a location that's going to give it a better shot of getting some clean air. So here's what we did. On the back of the pump where the filter is supposed to screw in I went ahead and put an elbow on there. It's just a little brass elbow and then that is connected to this this vacuum line. It's a half inch vacuum line. It's a really huge diameter. It's much larger than the, the size of the hole in the filter itself. And then that is routed up to the front. You can see this little, little bracket I made. That's attached to the bracket that holds the compressor line. And that's just to keep this hose down. And then that actually runs up front into the cavity. So now back inside the trunk here, uh, this is that bulkhead fitting that was for the compressor line and then right down below it here you'll see another bulkhead fitting and that is where this filter screws on. So now if I just simply thread this in you can see now that the filter is actually inside the trunk. So really with the filter being inside the trunk it should always be drawing fresh air which means that filter element should last a long long time. The pump did come with a couple extra elements, so we'll have those uh, just with our extra parts. And it's easy enough to reach down inside and, and swap it out. But at least now we know we're going to be getting clean air uh, in an area that's uh, easy to access should we ever need to change the filter. It was uh, you know, probably not necessary. Realistically, there's tons of these cars out there with the filter stuck right in the back and people just deal with it. But we want things to be as nice as possible, so I went ahead and uh, I went ahead and did that. The tank here is uh, is all mounted and ready to go. And the last thing I did here, just 
within the last couple of days is I went ahead and got everything plumbed. And uh, let me let me pop this tank out here and actually show you all the stuff I did. All right, here it is out of the car. And you're gonna see a whole bunch of stuff here that's kind of hanging off all the corners. And uh, I'm gonna do a, a little more in depth video later and explain uh, explain exactly what I did and kind of give you an idea on all the parts that were used. But the gist of it is here, uh, the instructions that came with this said to plug all the holes and just have one hole for the pressure switch and for an airline. Probably works just fine. But I wanted to add some safety and also just some convenience to this. So here's what we did. First things first, on the bottom of the tank there is a, there is a bung here. And I added a drain line. You know, it's a compressor. It's going to get condensation in it. And we want to make sure that we, uh, we don't rust the tank out prematurely. So what I've done here is I've added this couple of elbows, some brass pipe here, and that runs over to a, a little valve. And now what we can do at any time is we can just crack the valve open and any moisture that builds up inside this is just going to get blown out. Now, you notice there's a hose barb on the end of this pipe here. And what I've done is I, I've got a hose that hooks up to this. It actually runs over to another bulkhead fitting with a hose barb and directs the air outside the trunk. So at any time, if you want to drain the tank, make sure there's no water in it, you just pop the valve and any liquid that's in there is going to get shot right outside the car, nice and clean. And uh, really, it's in a pretty convenient location. Over on the side of the tank here, uh, you'll notice I've got a, a little Y fitting in here and a couple of things hanging off it. First off, I added a Schrader valve to actually fill the tank. Because if at any time this maybe has a dead battery or, you know, the compressor dies and the thing's aired out, we want to get it filled up, we at least have the option of uh, filling the tank with just a, an external air compressor. So that's just a nicety here. This right here is actually a pressure relief valve. Again, probably not necessary, but if this thing ever goes over pressure, I wanted to have a way for it to, uh, to relieve that and save the tank and, and, and all of our fittings. It was a cheap addition, and I figured it'd be a good, a good safety thing. So over on this side of the tank, we've just got all the stuff that was included with the kit. So we've got a T, uh, that allows us to hook up our pressure switch, and that's what's going to control the air compressor. And then we've got an exit here for the actual pressure line. Now, in this case, this is just going to be the fill line. And you'll see I've got a uh, couple of fittings just kind of cobbled together here right now. And this is just so I could pressurize the tank and, and check all these fittings for leaks. Uh, so this will be going away, and it'll just be the one plastic line will go to the bulkhead connector that you saw earlier. So that's just kind of a quick rundown of what's, what's going on with the tank here. But at least we've got it finished up. Uh, it is pressurized right now and I've checked everything for leaks and really this is ready to, ready to drop in the car. And uh, now that I've got this taken care of, we can go ahead and finish the wiring. because I needed to get the switch in place so I would know where to run the wires for the, for the controls. And I also wanted to make sure I had all holes drilled for all the fittings that I was going to be using. So really, the tank is now complete and we can move back to some of the other stuff we need to work on. Some of the other stuff we have going on here. Uh, I put out a, a questionnaire or a poll here a few weeks ago uh, mentioning what kind of horns we were going to put in the car and then I did reveal that we're actually putting all three of the different sized horns in this and well I have them all mounted Again, I needed those mounted so I knew where to run all the wiring. And uh, well, I'm gonna do my best to, to kind of show you where things are, are mounted up here. From the inside, if I remove these access covers here, you can actually see this is our bad boy horn right here. So this bolt is what is holding that in and it's mounted right, right behind this portion uh, and it's clear of the gas tank. Now down here, you'll see much lower, you'll see another another button head bolt down there. And that is actually for the Auga horn, which is hidden down low. Well, if we look from inside where the gas tank's gonna be mounted, you can actually see the, 
the red horn down here, that's the Aouga horn. And that's, again, mounted down low, but it's up high enough so it's not gonna drag on the ground. Over on the other side, you'll see where the bad boy horn is, is mounted. And again, that's clear of the gas tank. And then right down below that, you can just make out the, the little round black one. That's the, the beep beep horn. And that is actually just a motorcycle horn. Now that I've got you at this angle here, you can actually see the, the fittings for the air compressor. So this little elbow right here has got my plastic line attached to it. You can see that moving around. And then right below it is the, the actual compressor line. And if I just rotate this around, you can see I've got a little, little Y splitter that all of this threads into. And then that goes into that bulkhead connector right, right up and through there. So there's been a bunch of other little things that I've been working on. Everything's kind of got to be mounted now so I can get the wires routed, get holes drilled and all that. Uh, one stupid thing that took me way too long to figure out was where to put the windshield washer pump. Because we're not running a spare tire, uh, we don't have the original pressurized tank, um, or at least the way of pressurizing the tank. So what I did here is I, I mounted the pump um, in a, the most convenient location I could, and we're still going to be running the original tank, you can see here. And then we'll just have the hose come down and then that will that will connect to our pump which is which is just tucked away in the corner now that i've got all this mounted up i can get the hose routed i can get my wiring routed and, and really kind of get all that figured out but that's the kind of stuff that really just just chews up time you know i want to make sure i get everything done right and uh, i want to get it done right the first time i don't want to be running into any issues uh, once we go to put the car together uh, after everything's painted so I'd rather, I'd rather spend the time now, make sure everything's right, than, uh, than have to deal with it later. But all in all, that's kind, of, that's kind of it. That's what we've been dealing with. It's a lot of putting things on, taking things off. I did pull all the wiring out of the car so I could get the tabs welded in, and I had to put all the wiring back in. I've had both fenders off and on the car probably two or three times trying to sort the wiring for that. And I'll show you some of the some of the routings for that at a later date here, but really, things are things are really starting to cook now. There's a couple more little things I have to figure out, um, but really at this point, it's it's just kind of terminating things, making sure all my wiring's the right length, and then once I've got that done, I can go ahead and kind of clean up all the wiring as far as how it's routed and all that, and get it ready for for some wrapping. I'm not going to wrap the wiring right now. I'm going to leave everything just held together with zip ties. I figure I'll wait until I actually am ready to put it in the car. Just on the off chance I'm going to make any changes. But at least we'll have everything uh, zip tied in the proper location. So that should be pretty easy. But other than that, uh, it's just been uh, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And, you know, almost finished with this. I'm... I'm Pretty confident that I'm going to be able to get the wiring finished up this week, and then really I can call the front half of the car done, and that's then it's time to move on to the rear. So really, that's it. That's that's what I got going on this week, and uh, there'll be some more in-depth videos on each of these little steps, just so you can kind of kind of see how I got everything figured out. But that's what I got for now. So uh, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching, and uh, you know, until the next one, I'll see you around.